This is now my seventh ultra marathon distance, and it's one of several ultra marathon videos I've made since starting this YouTube channel. I have a special affiliation to this course, which is the Thames Path 100K Ultra. This will now be my second time attempting the Thames Path. When you enter into an ultra, especially one that's 100K in distance, the best piece of advice I can offer anyone that's trying it for the first time, and this is probably the best bit of advice anyone can ever get for trying a long distance, expect the unexpected. There's only so much that can go wrong if you're running 10K, half marathon, even a marathon, mainly to do with hydration. When you're running this kind of distance, 100K, pretty much anything and everything can go wrong. One of my bucket list dreams is to run a 100K ultra marathon in under 18 hours. That's always been something I've wanted to achieve. So with this sub 20 hour target ringing in my head, I arrived at the start line, waited in the 45 minute queue for the bag drop, stared motionless at the two enthusiastic warm up ladies on stage, set my watch to 18 hours, the target I want to beat, stood on the start line and set off. Two, one, let's go. Now I've now completed this race, the Thames Path Challenge, once before. I've mentioned this already. I completed it last year and I ran it in 21 hours and nine minutes. So this time my aim was to not only beat 21 hours, but come in under the 20 hour mark. That was my goal. Be better than I was before, and that's why I'm in this race, as it's not just a bloody long run. Now I know I said I wanted to get a sub 20, but I always aim for the stars and hope to hit the moon. If I put 18 hours in then I've got a really good chance of coming in under 20 and who knows I might be good enough today to actually get my bucket list target. I didn't blast off the start line as it's a 100k race not a 10k PB attempt and after I finally got my watch onto the right pace pro setting that measures my pace and time and automatically calculates my finish time for me throughout the run it auto adjusts if I slow or speed up I started running and unbelievably other than stopping at the three pit stops in between here and the 50k halfway mark I didn't stop running once and maintained a really good pace that I had pre Planned. This is the start of Huntley Bridge to Henley, start of a 100k adventure, running over the Thames. My aim was to try and keep to a seven minute kilometre pace for as long as physically possible. This pace would allow me a lot of leeway on the back end of this run and seven minutes per kilometre is what I've been training to. Right, we're well and truly underway now. That's 1k done, only 99k left to go. Easy. This is the part coming up within the next 2k where I fell over last year. Insert clip. So, I intend not to replicate that this year. Hello mate, thank you. No, I won't, I'm trying not to, I just said that. <laughs> Good luck. He just said don't fall over. I will say the event organizers, action challenge, really good, really good organizers. Really well organized event. One of the reasons I'm doing it again, that and I have unfinished business. I don't normally promote specific events as I'm not sponsored by any of them and I enter them with my own money. But for anyone looking to run their first ultra, not only is this route pancake flat, but the pit stops are probably the best I've ever seen at running events. They've literally got everything you could need. We're now just going under the next bridge. What is it, Barnes Bridge? It was what I am gonna do in a second when I pass a bench. Is I'm going to take this jacket off. I knew there was no way I could hold a seven minute kilometer pace for 100k so my strategy was to hold that seven minutes for the first half and then allow myself more time for the second half. My fitness more my weight has helped. I'm a lot lighter this year. Last year I was a 111, 112 kg. My last weigh-in was 94 but I know I'm lighter than that now and obviously my fitness levels have improved so I'm a lot faster. I'm intentionally keeping it slow. It's 100k 100k it's not a park run but like my intro said what happened in this race i couldn't plan for or even hope to overcome the race does not end as well as it started spoilers i think this is q bridge it's like the 50th bridge 10k mark 90k left to go i still haven't taken this jacket off which i'm gonna do in a minute in fact i'm gonna stop and do it now 
Now on average, 35% of viewers watching this video would not have yet subscribed to my channel. If that's you and you enjoy this video, then please consider subscribing as it really helps my channel out. So yeah, thank you. It feels a lot better. Probably kept the jacket on for too long, but never mind. This run is along the River Thames, as the name suggests, through a very pretty part of central London. And one of the reasons I love this race so much is the differences in terrain. One minute you're on city roads, then well-maintained footpaths, and then relatively rural trails. But the best bit is that it's completely flat, next to no gradients to overcome. I've had my feel of gradient races this year, and I was looking forward to just being able to run and not have to strategize any climbing. I don't know if you can see that, probably can't, but guy just fell in the guy just fell in the Thames rowing in a rowboat. He's just capsized. He's got a guy in a in a motorboat helping him. He's not very happy. The air's quite blue. Understandably, he's just falling in the Thames. I think I'd be uh, a bit miffed. Apparently it was someone else's fault for getting in his way. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. Oh. I'm now getting overtaken by much faster runners on the earlier waves, on the later waves. I was on an early wave. I always put my time uh, over egg. Probably not over egg, it's probably realistic, but if I listened to my competitive side, I'd be in a much later wave. And I don't want to be. I want to have as much daylight as I can. Now, this is a really good tip for anyone looking to enter in an event like this. Never put down your competitive target time as your expected finish time. Considering that if I run this in my hopeful target time of 18 hours, I'll be finishing at 1 a.m. as it is. I do not want to be in a later start time because daylight is better to run in than it is in the pitch black. So I want as much daylight as possible. This is the calm before the storm, guys. This is the fun bit. Where all the anxiety starts leaving your body. You can relax, enjoy the run before the pain sets in. I also have to plan for and contend with night running, which is a completely different beast, which includes having layers to put on and a head torch for the only light that will be around me, it'll be on me. Having done this route last year, the second half especially, the last 20 k is over fields and trails through woodland, it's pretty much pitch black, there's no you know, natural light, there's definitely no moonlight because of the tree canopy and there's no street lighting. I need to make sure that I've got everything I need to get from pit stop to pit stop. Another strategy I use is to only display my average page for my past kilometre, the route map and my expected finish time on my watch. I don't have my current time, my speed, my exact pace, anything that will make my competitive side push me harder than I need to go. If I need any of that, I can push one button and it shows me. Okay, all right, that's the 15K mark we've just completed. So yeah, happy with that. I don't know what the time is. I haven't looked at the time. I've intentionally not put the time on my watch. Uh, I've just got the route and my average pace. I've also become very good at judging my pace through my heart rate. I know that I'm pushing too hard if my heart starts pounding in my ears. So I just slow down. I don't need a watch to tell me that. I'm desperate for the toilet. The dreaded runner's wee. At this point in the run, I'm way ahead of schedule. And if I keep going at this pace, then I'll smash my target and maybe even hit my lifetime bucket list goal of sub 18 hours. But it's still really, really early days. We are just approaching pit stop one, which is, I think, just after 17K. So, which I am very grateful for, because I need the loo. I need to eat something. I've only had an energy gel so far. And obviously I've had quite a big breakfast. I had a, I think, 2,000 calorie breakfast. I can see the checkpoint. Now my tactic was to ensure that I ate at each of the pit stops, regardless of how well or badly I was running, especially if things were going badly. This was the biggest mistake I made last year, not eating enough calories in the first 50K, nearly completely ending my race. I wasn't gonna make the same mistake twice. I knew that nutrition and hydration was the best tactic I had to get the time that I was after. Hello mate. Hey, how you doing? Good, you? 
Good, good. Lovely. That's it, mate. All worked. Thank you. So at pit stop one, obviously the first pit stop after the start line, I had a wee, refilled my water. Water is king. Dropped my electrolyte tablet from my South East London drugs bag into one of the bottles I was carrying. Okay, electrolytes are going in. And then I checked out the food tent for calorie filled delights. Can I ask a random question? Is anything other than fruit vegan? Yeah, we've got um, some vegan apple. Oh, nice one. Pastries. That's music to my ears. Thank you so much. Can I take two? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. So having been cheeky and managed to snag two huge apple turnovers, I got straight back out onto the path, inhaled the pastries and started running again. Just left the pit stop, finished my two massive apple turnovers. They were exactly what the doctor ordered. High in calories. I am 45 minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> 45 minutes so I've got a schedule I haven't back-ended it so it's the same pace all the way through so obviously running a faster pace now means I'm clawing time back that I'm gonna need towards the end when I slow right down I've set a target time which I don't want to say out loud in case I jinx it but if I whisper it I've set a target time of 18 hours <sighs> I'll probably burn about 10,000 calories a day. There's no way I'll be able to consume enough food to replace those lost calories. I just need to effectively manage the calorie deficit through physical real food at each pit stop and by chugging energy gels full of carbs and electrolytes in between when running. So basically I'm over indexing on the amount I would normally feel comfortable eating during a race. Teddington Lock, this is where the canal boats join the Thames. Ah, oh, park run. <laughs> Nearly went the wrong way then. There's a guy waving people for the park run. Right, I'm at 19k. Before I sleep, hear the crickets, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Once we've crossed over, we get to run on the Thames past Hampton Court Palace One of my favourite bits I always enjoy this bit It's one of the few bits you get to enjoy because you're not so knackered by this point but you still get to enjoy things I'll be honest, it's a privilege to be able to do stuff like this because one day I'll be too old but I'm not yet and I'm enjoying it Found we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right you and I, the future is bright. This here is Hampton Court Palace, and it's a I'm at exactly twenty six kilometers, and I am one hour and three minutes ahead of schedule <laughs> which means absolutely nothing 24k left to go to the halfway point but yeah Hampton Court having now run my favorite part of the route past Hampton Court Palace I arrived at pit stop two where I'd planned to eat more than just two apple pastries I'm just going to quickly refill my water I need to eat something and then go I've literally just stopped for two seconds. I'm going to quickly treat my feet with some talcum powder because I'm starting to feel some friction. I've refilled my water and I'm going to eat a vegan uh, onion bhaji and mint sauce sandwich. That's, it was either that or falafel. So as I sit in a deck chair in the sun enjoying the warmth and I show you a cheeky bit of leg, I attempted to treat two toes that had started to form hot spots. I'm just using friction reducing plaster to do this and check them again at the next pit stop. I spent 15 minutes in that pit stop 
which was probably 10 minutes longer than I wanted to. However, very, very good news. I managed to treat a blister, well, a hot spot, not a blister. I treated it before it became a blister. I managed to eat this huge sandwich, a packet of crisps, and drink a can of fizzy pop, and I had a poo. And I know you didn't want to know that, but that's a game changer. Now, I'm really sorry to share this in a video. I know it's not what you want to hear, but it is true. Managing to successfully achieve a number two is a game changer. There's nothing worse than being caught short on a busy trail in central London by the River Thames in the summer. There are not a lot of quiet bushes for the, you know what, the unmentionable. He who shall not be named, the plop plops. Basically, I was thrilled. I had had a sh We are 35K. I've got 15K to the halfway point. Ah, oh, thank you. Good luck, guys. There's a nice breeze. It's about it's about 17 degrees at the moment, so good running conditions. But it was this time last year where it was at the hottest. But this time last year, I remember feeling really bad, and it was just up here where I thought I was going to black out because of dehydration. I had a little sit down on this bench up here to pretend to change a take a stone out of my shoe, so I didn't look like a wimp. And I remember if I hadn't have done that, then I would have hit the deck. Sit rep, I actually feel all right. I'm starting to get a bit of burning on my little toes on both feet. The good news is at the halfway point, not only can I retreat them, but I also get to change my trainers. So I've got waterproof trail trainers that I'm gonna change into at halfway. Last year was still playing on my mind at certain points and my tactics were to very much ensure that I'm not doomed to repeat the same mistakes. So far, so good. So as I waffle on along this section, what I'm saying is that I've packed another pair of trainers for the second half. When the sun goes fully down and the ground becomes wet from mildew, and because I'll be running over fields and on trails, I've packed waterproof trail trainers for the second half. Something I wish I did last year, as the wet grass meant I'd had wet feet, and wet feet equals blisters, baby. I do not want wet feet blisters. They're the worst. Okay, 41K, it's a lovely day. What a glorious day, look at this, along the Thames. Hang on, look at that. That's marathon distance. <laughs> it's taken me six hours. <laughs> I've stopped at three pit stops. I just need to go to the toilet. I've got a very upset stomach. I thought I was winning. When I, was man when I was able to go at the last one, but yeah, something's upset me. So yeah, I'm gonna make a beeline for the toilet. See my family. There she is. Where is it at? Just up here. I need to go to the toilet. So I reached the halfway point in record time for me. I had smashed it to this point. I was an hour ahead of schedule and this afforded me a little time to stop and eat. I inhaled a large tub of pasta, which was very much needed. I treated the two hot spots on my toes in the medic's tent, so I did it professionally, to ensure that they don't return and they don't turn into anything major. And I also needed a few extra minutes to take care of the business the unmentionable, the thing all runners dread. My nan would say a very, very bad tummy. She wouldn't say that, she was from London. She'd say, you've got the sh We're just coming up to 55K, so 5K from halfway. I'm starting to feel sore, other than my stomach problems, which I'm trying not to think about. I also don't wanna make it the plot point of this video. But other than that, I feel all right. I'm trying to maintain a pace. At the moment, I've got a seven minute kilometre pace, which is very, very good for this point in the race. As fatigue was now starting to kick in, but still feeling relatively good, considering some things had to give. And apparently that was my enthusiasm to film Windsor Castle from afar. All these really good tourist hotspots en route, and I couldn't be asked to film any of them. 
I'd now reached 60k at a really, really good pace. I'd averaged between 7 to 8 minutes a kilometre, which put me well ahead of my target goal of 18 hours. I might have even have been on for a 17 hour finish, and I even had a small buffer to allow for a short walk-in break or pit stop breaks. Basically, things were looking really good at this point, but as you know from watching my previous videos in the past on my channel, which I'm hoping you're subscribing to, things have a way of going south very, very quickly. I'm leaving the, the 63k checkpoint. I should have really have put on my base layer, but I'm still really warm. I don't want to start sweating unnecessarily. As I left the 63k pit stop, I knew I was way ahead of schedule. Last year, it was pitch black at this point, and I still had about 30 minutes of light left, but I knew the rest of this 37k run was going to be in the dark. And when I say dark, I'm talking paranormal activity, pitch black. Okay, okay, sit rep. Uh, so, sun is starting to go down, but it's not gone down yet. I'm ahead of the curve. We're still ahead of schedule. I've left the checkpoint and I've managed to run an eight minute kilometre, which, happy with that. And, oh. But it was at this moment, whilst filming and feeling really, really good, I full on kicked an iceberg stone in the ground. You know, one of those big rocks that are half buried in the trowel, they're like hitting a brick wall. I full on Johnny Wilkinson drop kicked the boulder that felt big enough to sink the Titanic and immediately wanted to either scream or cry. Oh. Right, I'm gonna turn this off because I need one over then. Oh. I didn't know whether to carry on or curl up in the fetus position on the floor. Oh, that was a proper big rock. <sighs> Concentrate. Um... Luckily for me, and for the benefit of this video, I tried to keep on running. Oh, that really hurt. I'll do it in a minute. I'm gonna turn this off because I need to concentrate. The pain was eye-watering. It was at this moment that I realized I had ruined my race. Now I tried my best to put the pain to the back of my head. I even tried my best to keep on running, but my toe was feeling like I had done some serious damage to it. The run was now nothing more than a shuffle and I could also feel it swelling up inside my shoe. Okay, sit rep, we have a problem guys. So I've tried running on it and we're at 70K. You can't see me at all. I think I might have broken my toe or I've done something to it. We're at 71K, I can't run on it. So I smashed it into that stone back there. I think the next pit stop's at 78k. I'm gonna try and get to the pit stop and take some paracetamol. Okay, right, so I've got my head torch on now, pitch black. However, my toe is taking up all of my energy. I can't, I can barely move now. It's really, I'm really annoyed because I physically feel fine. It's killing me. And it, as soon as it touches the side of my shoe, it sends a you know, sharp pain up my leg. And I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, I haven't broken it. So I've just left the 78K pit stop. I've had some painkillers in the hope that I can dull this pain. I'd really like to walk without a limp because it's starting to hurt my other foot. Oh man. I filmed this at the 95K mark. I was in agony and as I limped over the hill, I saw two brilliant white deer right next to me in the field. It was like an hallucination. I've increased the contrast and brightness in the vain hope you can see them too and that I wasn't just hallucinating this. <laughs> I know the finish line's up here. I can't run. I'm just gonna try and hobble as best I can. Come on, Ryan. Between here, drop kicking a stone and potentially breaking my toe and the finish line, I didn't do a lot of filming. I've got to be honest with you, at every step I was considering dropping out, but there were two factors that kept me going. The first was that I was in the middle of nowhere and I had no idea where I was. So to get Tracy to come and find me would have been an ordeal in itself. But the main reason, and this is something which I don't recommend, the main reason was I just can't have a withdrawal next to my name. I needed to finish this race. I had started it so well. And even though I knew that I wasn't on for my bucket list target now because I was limp walking and I was starting to hurt my other leg, I knew that I had to cross that finish line no matter what happened. Hello, mate. Oh, I've been better. Bit, bit, of walk. bit of a slog. Yeah, well done. Bit of a slog. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Saturday night out. I know, it? yeah. 
Seems like a good idea yesterday. I eventually hobbled over the finish line in 19 hours and 23 minutes. That was just under two hours faster than last year, which I will 100% take considering how much I messed up my toe. I know I probably shouldn't have continued and I wouldn't recommend powering through a potential broken toe injury, but in the moment, this is what I did and I'm now paying the price for that today. I had achieved the sub 20 hour I wanted last year. I'm now gunning for that sub 18 hour in the future. It's now the day after the race before. I've had a really good night's sleep. I've had three showers. One when I got home last night and two this morning to wash all the grime, dirt and debris off of my legs and body. My legs feel fine, which I'm really pleased with. So no soreness, which goes a long way to complementing my fitness levels at the moment. But my toe is completely foobarred. I'm going to go to the hospital later today when Tracy gets back from work so they can have a look at it. I haven't gone yet as it's only the day after the race and I physically couldn't walk when I got home last night. Hopefully it's not broken and I'll be back up and out running and cycling as soon as possible. I will put a picture of it up. It's pretty gross and it's pretty black and blue. But I appreciate the comments on my Instagram post when I put it on there and be assured I will get it checked out. So yeah, thank you for everyone that sent me a message. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in next week's video before i sleep hear the crickets see the moon side by side and through and through no limit to what we can do got it